Hello there and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Premier League, the fact that they met on Friday and how would what would be the best way of finishing the season from now, like or what are our options basically. This article from the Daily Mail, which don't get me started, like I don't really like the Daily Mail but it was an interesting article for the fact that they've come up with seven different ways, probably about five of them are ridiculous and stupid but let's look at them anyway and just figure out what is the best way to go forward in terms of finishing not only the Premier League season, but seasons in general, um, like including the Championship and whatever else might still be going on. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What is the best way, do you think, is to go about finishing the season? Um, and on Friday, it was the Premier League uh, met. Now, there was apparently no discussion about declaring the season null and void or anything like that. There also wasn't a determined end date as far as I'm aware from what I remember reading um there's no like sort of we have to finish at this sort of date but clubs would like to be able to finish by the 30th of June if possible but it's not a set deadline that is currently immovable or anything like that so we're looking at option one declare the season null and void which basically means this season the 1920 season is erased from history basically all it would say in the history books is um, season cancelled due to the coronavirus pandemic, stuff like that. Um, and it just means that everything that happens in that season, Liverpool don't win the title. Um, teams that are going for Europe at the moment, they don't go, for, they're not in there, or they might not be in there depending on how they work that one out. Um, teams that are in the relegation zone don't get relegated. Teams in the championship don't get promoted, don't get relegated, and so on and so on, basically like that. So, you know, apparently the pros here is it offers a clean break, draws a line under the 1920 season, and you basically just, you know, like I say, teams don't get relegation, uh, relegated and all that sort of stuff. Um, cons, obviously, it's harsh on Liverpool, which it is harsh, but it's not really the overriding factor when you take in the needs of the many over the needs of the few. I can't believe I've just quoted Star Trek. Um, but even so... Um, Teams, as I said before, teams still challenging for European football, miss out on the Champions League. So you think of like Leicester getting back in the Champions League, they would miss out. Um, Tottenham don't get to be able to chase for it, even though they have, they've fairly fallen off, but there's still a chance. Um, same with Arsenal, they've got a chance of European football. Whether their fans want it or not, they need that finance, to be fair. Um, with so many years out of the Champions League, and it looks like they would have a year out of the Europa League, they would need that finance, in my opinion. Then you've got the likes of Wolves, Sheffield United, that uh, that are having brilliant seasons, deserve European football, in my opinion. There's Everton also chasing that pack as well. Then you get to the relegation zone. Um, you'd have the likes of, I think, is it Aston Villa, uh, Norwich, who they I don't know who else is in there. I can't remember who the third team is. I know West Ham are just above it, which is why they want the season null and voided, because then they won't get relegated or, any, or whatever happens. Um... You know, that there's just a lot of factors. And then as it says here, it opens the door to all kinds of legal action from clubs, broadcasters and sponsors because there is a ridiculous amount of money in, involved in football and that is always the overriding factor, money. Money is what determines pretty much everything in football. There would be so much uh, legal action and legal courses that people would take and clubs would take. It would just be such a negative on the game that... Is it worth null and void in the season just so that Liverpool don't get the title? I would contest that one and say, have a bit of you know perspective and have a bit of longevity sort of perspective as well. Really look at the big picture. Yes, you might not want Liverpool to win the title, and that's why you want it null and void. Fair enough, that's fine. That's rivalry. That's just that's what I expect. But look at everything else. The likes of the Championship, Leeds and uh, West Brom wouldn't get the chance to be up into the Premier League. Leeds, who've been trying to get in back into the Premier League for about 16 years. Like, they, they've, they're top of their league right now, I think. Not by much, but they're still top of their league. And then you've got the playoff places, from the, and then you've got the relegation zone places from the Premier League, the relegation zones from the Championship. There's so many variables that just null and void in the season isn't as simple as it sounds. It's not just cut and dry as saying, right, that's it. That never happened. Let's move on to the next. It's not that cut and dry, and I don't think a lot of people really appreciate that. Option two, predict the remaining fixtures, which is a horrible idea. Um, you basically predict on sort of like, so what is it? Um, Sheffield United have a home average of 1.6 this season. Um, I must mean like points per game or something like that. Um, and Wolves 
have an away of average of 1.5. So if you do a prediction of, say, home, home form versus away form, depending on what team is playing uh, home or away, then you would say, oh, instantly, so Sheffield versus Wolves, Sheffield had the 1.6, Wolves had the 1.5, therefore Wolves lose and Sheffield win. That's how you would predict the rest of the fixtures based on that. Now, obviously, that would probably mean majority of the time Liverpool win their fixtures, but you cannot predict fixtures like this. You just cannot. It says down here, you can never factor in for the many, many random factors that decide the outcome of the matches. AKA, let's look at Liverpool versus Watford That when Watford beat us 3-0. You cannot account for the fact that we were going to play absolutely awful and Watford were going to play exceptionally well. You can't account for that. It just happens every now and again. So that is a really, really silly idea. And I hope that that doesn't... I hope nothing like that happens in this one anyway. Um, option three, base things off the first uh, the first meetings this season. Again, it's a little bit like predicting the fixtures. But it takes no account of form. Uh, teams that have performed well in recent weeks are left disadvantaged. So again, you look at the likes of a Watford here. Since Nigel Pearson's t turned up, they played very, very well. They might actually even be outside the relegation zone, but I can't remember to be honest. Um, it's not a good. It's not a good way to go about things. You know, it, 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 there's it's being based purely on the opening half of the season. Doesn't take into account improvements as result. Like like uh, teams like Leicester would probably benefit because Leicester had a absolutely storming first half of the season. Dropped off around Christmas time. Um, but but like you, if you base it on the first sort of the the first 19 uh, fixtures and then just go from that it it doesn't take into account the whole the, the entire season it really really doesn't um not fairly anyway uh points per game um relatively straightforward method produces a final table by dividing teams current points totals by games played to get a point per game average goal difference is then used to separate any teams that finish level on points per goal Right, so the only change in the table, it affects those teams with a game in hand. So Sheffield with 1.54 would leapfrog Wolves 1.48 into 6. And Arsenal 1.43 would t overtake Tottenham. Aston Villa also have a game in hand, but unfortunately their points per game isn't good enough to climb out of the drop zone. It's simple to work out. Um, takes account of every game played in three quarters of the season to date. Takes account of games in hand. League table doesn't alter a great deal from the present likely to anger those teams relegated who would no doubt argue they would have picked up form in the running, disregards, relative ease, difficulty of remaining games on the fixture list, which is exactly correct. Again, it's another it's another form of trying to predict what would happen, probably in a less fair way out of the, one, the options that we've had so far. So again, not a very good option, and I, I think it's just... Uh, I don't know, I just don't agree with these these options at all. Um, option five, predicting the outcome of remaining games plus historic results. So it was devised by Opta and Stats Perform when the league was stopped a few weeks ago and takes into account quite a few things. Estimated the probabilities of a win, draw or defeat in the remaining games based on each team's attack and defensive quality. Right, okay. So that would, that would, yeah. So you'd kind of see that, like where Liverpool would obviously finish fairly, fairly high up. Well, they would finish high up definitely finish first in my opinion based on that these qualities are based on four years of historic results which more with more weighing giving to more recent results it also takes into account the quality of the opposition simulated the outcome of the season 10,000 times into in order to produce the final league standings pros certainly comprehensive takes into account the strengths and weaknesses of each team plus form only produces a probability for each finishing team position, so less definitive, um, pretty complicated for anyone to understand. Those who've done well in the last few seasons have an extra advantage. And you've also got to look in the last couple of seasons, like, say, say take Liverpool, for example. If you go back four seasons, we've probably got entirely different personnel compared to four seasons ago. So that would obviously give you an example because our quality has gone up. And if a team's quality has maybe gone down or something like that, it's, that's, a, that's a hell of a... Don't get me wrong, it is very detailed, very in-depth, very comprehensive, as it says, but a really wacky idea and something that's been simulated 10,000 times and it's still come up with the fact that basically all of the league positions are the same, pretty much. Wow, no, that's, that's, 
that is bonkers, absolutely bonkers. And then again, you get likes of uh, Sheffield, who have been in a lower league and stuff like that, and Arsenal, who again, so I think what four years ago they will have had two season, one season of Champions League, two seasons of the Europa League, maybe. Uh, I can't remember what it, it might be two of each two two Champions League two Europa League so where they finished fourth where they finished fifth so that gives them a bit of an unfair advantage in my opinion that, that's crazy uh, it really is um, option six is to leave the table as it is with relegation um, the argument is the old cliche that the table rarely lies at this stage of the season and European places and relegation is decided accordingly. The bottom three drop down and the top three from the championship are promoted in their place with the season in the EFL also ended. So, draws a line under the season, allows players and managers to start planning for next season, knowing where that they stand. With 29 of 38 matches completed, argument can be made for saying table is a fair reflection of the season and shows West Brom and Leeds... Uh, at the top of the table get the promotion that they deserve it would quickly turn into a legal minefield with clubs who had a chance of qualifying for Europe or staying up left furious the relegated teams and those that miss out on European competition hit hard financially league tables so tight um, much could change in the remaining nine games integrity of Premier League competition is damaged unfair on those below third placed Fulham in the championship who might have won promotion through the playoffs now, and you go and look at the Premier League table, I think it's at the top here, and it, when it says how tight the Premier League is, um, I mean, you look at, so look at these pictures here. So you've got from Chelsea to Tottenham in eighth, there is a seven-point gap. That is still a tight gap with nine games to go. And then you look at between like the relegation zone, there's barely anything in it. Norwich have the biggest mountain to climb, but then you've got 25 points, 27, 27, 27, 29, right? It's just not a, it, you know, it's not a very good thing to try and just say, right, we'll just leave it as it is um, for now and we'll just go on with next season. That's, you can't do that. Um, option seven, leave the league table as it is, but expand the league. So, from the past few weeks, leave the table is, but not have any relegation. Instead, the 20 teams currently in the Premier League remain and are joined by Leeds and West Brom, the top two in the Championship, to create a 22-team league. This would be a return to the early years of the Premier League when there were 22 teams. There would accordingly be a knock-on effect through the divisions of the EFL with relegation and promotion, promotion adjusted accordingly for 2020 and 2021 season. A clean break, blah, 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 it, uh, you know, relegation, yep. Teams that miss out on Europe because the season ending early, again, that's another point there. What about the, it's the championship playoffs that are the important thing here, though? It it becomes unfair that four teams that would be normally be fighting for a playoff spot, that third spot that you get for getting promotion into the Premier League, that they would miss out. It Again, while it sounds like it's only one team, there are m many different factors in there as well. Are there teams that are below the playoff places in the championship that could have got themselves up there's too many variables in that one again you know again like some of these things sound really simple but again there's financial you know things those that miss out on europe could argue that they may have got themselves in there you just don't know how it's going to end like out of all of these ones the only option that it doesn't actually provide is the option of finishing the season if and when possible that is the option that I'm a, I'm a fan of. Not from a Liverpool perspective, but a football perspective. And I think that this should be something that should be considered all over. Like, all over Europe, all over world football. If you have a chance to finish your 19-20 season, finish it before starting the next season. Before even thinking about the next season. That is the approach that I would like, I'd like us to take. Because it gives you... I, I've said before that I wouldn't mind... If instead of doing, instead of like cancelling this season, null and voiding this season, predicting it, whatever you want to do, instead of doing that and then just moving on to next season, finish this current season whenever it can be finished safely. Finish this season when it can be done. And then if a shortened 21, uh, 2020 21 season has to happen, or does that season have to happen at all? Do, can that season go without having happened? Let everybody finish this current season, get ready for the Euros and stuff like that, have a bit of a extended break, whatever. There's Again, there's going to be financial complications that I'm, I'm not aware of that would say, no, no, you have to do the 2021 20, season. Fair enough. 
that's fine. But football is congested as it is with a normal season, without a pandemic. It's always congested. Now, maybe, is it for a season? Do you do you not have the the um, the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup? Do you get rid of those for a season? Is that an option? Maybe, because that would sort your fixture congestion out quite a bit, quite a lot. It really honestly would. You know, I, I don't know what the options are, but I I think the only option that is viable is to finish this season whenever it can be finished. That's my opinion. These seven different things here in this article, six of them are ridiculous. The null and void in one is the most realistic out of this article. But that is just, for me, it's not an option. It brings about the most um, legal complications anyway. I think this season must be finished whenever it can be finished before even thinking about going on to the next season. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Bit of a longer video today, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you managed to get some good thoughts out of it yourselves. Um, and do let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think is the most viable option moving forward um, for football? Not just Liverpool, not just any other team, but for football in general. What is the way to move forward? Let me know it in the comments below. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do like it and subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you once again, and I'll catch you later.